Hello, we are going live into the Successful Bookkeeper Australia group. So welcome, uh, welcome those that are, are watching from Facebook land, listening to this later um, and uh, attending us, attending live as well. So the Zoom link will be there in the link um, to join us live. So yeah, feel free because we'd love to get some engagement from uh, those that are joining us about this topic, about the failure. And, and we'll talk about the success, you know, our relationship with success, which is all part of our relationship with failure as well. Um, so those that are on live, feel free to share your video so we can see you. Um, it's always nice to have some extra faces on the, on the group. Um, so feel free to do that. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about how to change your relationship with failure. So this is a, a, a topic that Deb and I were just talking just off camera and um, realised that we can go quite deep with this topic and, and go into different ways. That's why we'd love to, you know, get people off the, off the call and, and have them join us uh, talking so we can talk through some of your feelings and, you know, some of the issues that come up and, and, and how we feel about failure and, um, you know, just keep that conversation real um, and drill down a little bit. We're going to go a little bit deeper than, you know, maybe we, we all might like to, but it's good to explore um, yeah, how we feel about this. So, you know, part of the, um, the thoughts on experiencing failure is not being able to achieve our goals. So, you know, now is a good time. And, and last week we did talk about kickstarting the new year with new resolutions, new goals. Um, so the, the idea of setting goals is not necessarily to say that we're not going to achieve them or may set unrealistic goals, but it's okay if we don't don't achieve them if we do you know put our goals out there that we do want to put on an extra hundred thousand or we put on you know three staff members or you know so many clients or whatever it is and don't quite achieve that then it's not a failure so we're going to be talking about you know the things that you know it's it's not a failure it's an opportunity to um, stretch yourself and move towards that target. And if you were, say, put on 100,000 and you achieved 80,000, then would you really consider that a failure? And that's, you know, it's still a good achievement to, to receive. Um, I know, Deb, when you were, you know, you were doing your goal setting that you always, you know, had a, an anxious time around, around the goals that you were, you were creating. Do you want to talk through a bit of, of that experience? Yes, yes. Uh, every year in January, uh, my business coach, Peter Cook, who's now uh, our business partner um, in pure bookkeeping, he, he and I would sit together and say, right, Deb, what are you going to, uh, what are your goals for this calendar year? Um, and then we would do that. Uh, also, we would have a look in, in June uh, to, to look back and see how we went in the last six months and how we're tracking to go into the, the, the to, to see if we would achieve on track to achieve our goals by the end of that calendar year. But that that day in January was a um, was a planning day and I never look forward to it. It um, I always felt very anxious about it, very nervous. Um, and and the reason like it took a bit of digging to get down to the bottom of why I felt uncomfortable about it. But, um, and Pete helped me with that. And what it was, there were two things going on in my mind. One, I wasn't sure what the right number was. So I, am I picking the right number? Is this realistic? All this sort of the doubts would come into my mind. Is that achievable? All this sort of thing. And the second one, which is the topic we're talking about today, is what if I don't get there? What if I set that $100,000 goal and I don't get there? And what does that mean about me? What does that say about me? Because as bookkeepers, and this is typical, like it's pretty much everyone, um, that's a generalisation, but a large majority of the population 
uh, are afraid of failing. Um, of course, we talk about bookkeepers and I understand the bookkeeping world and the bookkeeper's psyche and things like that because I am one. And so we are perfectionists and you've got to get your bank. It either reconciles or it doesn't, you know. You can't fudge that and you can't make stuff up. So it, it reconciles or it doesn't. It's black or it's white. You get there or you don't. And... If you don't reconcile something, well, that's not a good thing, which is why being a perfectionist is, is a great quality for bookkeepers because we're not going to leave that bank wreck until that's finished, until we can actually solve that. It doesn't, that's not a particularly good or useful quality when you are creating your goals and, and as far as a business owner goes. So I was terrified that I wouldn't, um, firstly, I didn't know what the right number was. And secondly, what if I didn't hit that number? And there was a lot of angst going on around that. And what I learnt over the years of working with Pete was to not be so serious about the goals. And Pete often referred to it as like, don't be really attached to it. So you know, if you, you make a commitment, for example, to whatever it is that you're absolutely 100%, you get married, 100% committed to your marriage and what have you. And so you're attached to that and this is what it's all about. Whereas when you set goals, a goal is, to get attached to a goal can lead to disappointment. Because if you set that goal, which is what we always recommend, to set that goal is a little bit of, I feel a little bit uncomfortable about this goal, which means you're more likely to not quite get there and that can feel uncomfortable, but you need to set that like that. But don't be committed to it in terms of attachment. Um, set the goal, but be more, you know, it's a game. It's, a, it's, it's okay. It's not in concrete. You can change it again. That's why Pete had and I had our meetings every, every month. We had our meetings and we looked at the numbers. And then every three months and six months and nine months, we kept looking at all the numbers to see if we were tracking on our goals. But the advantage to doing it as frequently as that and looking at those numbers is you can see, you can extrapolate the, the numbers and see if you are on track. And if you're not on track, to achieving the turnover, turning over that $100,000, well, you need to increase your marketing. You know, there's got to be an action that changes the outcome. And so if, you've, if you find when you, you've set the goal to turn over $100,000, you're nowhere near, you get to June and you're only on $30,000, well, you've got to do a, quite a bit of work in the second half of the year in terms of your marketing to actually make it a better or give you a better chance of, of reaching that goal. But it's that then what if you don't get there? And as Katrina said, are you a failure? If you only got to $80,000, but you had a $100,000 um, goal to get to, are you a failure? Well, uh, you know, I mean, technically, yes, I guess. Um, you didn't achieve your goal, but you are more likely to get closer to that goal if you have something that's a little bit of a stretch than you are if you don't have any goals at all. Yeah, and of course you are happy to, you know, achieve, you know, most of that target that you've got. So you have moved forward, you have put systems in place or uh, actions in place to move towards that target. So, you know, going any action moving forward, any action to improve your business or your systems or your education and your development is, is never, should never be seen as a, as a failure, no matter, you know, what you do um, achieve with, you know, that, that development that you're having. So I'd actually love to hear from the audience around what are some things that you actually feel are a failure in your um, in your feeling you like you know are you a failure because you don't know how to provide a certain solution to a client do you feel a failure because you don't have the same size business as another bookkeeper 
what are some of the the feelings that you have around or, or have had in the past because I know there's a lot of established bookkeepers on the call today as well um, so what are some of the feelings that you might have had as failures that you might like to um, to share and we could talk about um, and and even you know with those established businesses that have overcome those fears of failure is there somebody that would like to come off mute and um, have a chat about their failures or pop it down in the chat box while we're just calling on that i've got another question related to that but specifically around goal setting uh, and maybe if you can you put it in the chat box or come off mute are you afraid of setting goals is there anyone on the call that would like to talk about, have you set goals for, like we're the 24th of June. So have you set goals for the next financial year? Well, let's start off with that question. Pop in the chat box, have you set goals for the next financial year? Yes or no? Or unmute yourself and have a chat about it. Don't be shy. And this is in Facebook land as well. Pardon, Helen? I'll get the ball rolling because I love to talk. <laughs> I, think, I think we have to have goals. Even um, I can't imagine working without them. I really can't. I think realistic, but push yourself with your goals at the same time. Um, I think it makes it exciting. And if you come, you know, not quite so close, just make it better next time. Like just keep pushing ahead. They'll, sometimes the goals happen without you even realising. It's something that you want and then you look back and think, oh, wow, you know, got those clients that I wanted or, you know, I'm, I'm doing the kind of work that I want to do and, you know, being the, the better bookkeeper that I want to be. So, um, yeah. Sort of yeah. Have you, can I, can <laughs> I ask you, have you ever felt um a failure or what instances that you might have felt like that i still have it and i even express it to the client because it's on the basis that if i feel this i can't continue so i find we go in clients are all excited yeah you can do all this for me and yes i'll do all this for you and and then you come to a point where you're maybe a year into it or six months and then you think okay give it a bit more time but it gets to the year and if i look and say okay we're you're in the same situation you were in when we met and this is what we were working to do together and none of it's getting done you're not moving in that direction so it could be Cash flow, you know, reducing costs, everything else. So we that's something I really keep an eye on because I feel if I don't feel we're adding value, I can't work with someone. I can't, I feel like I'm wasting their money and my time. You know, so I don't, I I I'm very strong about that. It's not just about, yeah, keep the client, they seem to be happy with what we're doing. If I can't see a change in their business, um, you know, whether it be the, not just their profit, but just towards their goals that they've originally told us that they want, then I'll have a chat and I'll, I'll suggest, look, maybe if it's, because sometimes they, they don't get that direction from you. It happened once before. I had a client who um, very, uh, I guess his culture background didn't take direction from women. <laughs> so I reached out to a um, European bookkeeping colleague that I have and I said hey I think he'll listen to you because he won't listen to me and I think because I'm a girl <laughs> that's that's the honest truth and hey they met they hit it off and clients booming so I don't think it was something that we did wrong or we didn't connect because I'm still quite friendly with these clients you know we're always having a chat and I'll pop in and see how he's going but I feel I feel now I did the right thing because he's found the person he can connect with in a business sense to move his business forward. So, um, yeah, I do, that's, I guess, that's a failure I think that can keep happening. You know, if you're not making a difference, then what are we just doing reconciliations and general bookkeeping? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's identifying that, like it's, you, you, you've begun to understand that it's not a failure on your part. It's identifying that there is either a mismatch or that you're, you know, they're, they're not wanting that, you know, service or um, so it's not you personally not being able to achieve it. There's, there's some mismatch of which 
then just requires some communication of exactly finding out what it is that they do want and and if it is just compliance that they're not interested in doing the work um, or then maybe they're not an ideal client for you and that you move them on and you find a replacement if you are looking for just clients that you are wanting to make a difference with so it's you know we've got to take these experiences with a pinch of salt that they're not always you know a they're not they're not a failure on you it's just a a realization that you know you need to do something different differently perhaps mm. thanks for sharing helen and i know for myself and um when i had a client that i i didn't um you know do their book work uh quickly enough or get them you know um, set up on on a software and i didn't get them under control the way that my perfection wanted you know, I did feel a failure that I'd let them down. So, you, you know, you do have those emotions. and But uh, in reality, that, that was a learning opportunity for me to take it away from feeling personal about that. I mean, that was just something that I need to do better next time, which pushed me into putting better systems in place so that the work can move down the line a lot quicker, that it isn't... Um, it was stuck with me because I, I I couldn't push it on because I wasn't ready to, you know, to, to share it with other staff or I wasn't ready to do the work on that needed to go to the next stage. So it, it I held on to it for, for months and then the client said, I'm sick of this, I'm walking away. So it's like, oh, it's just that realisation, my business is not perfect. I need to fix this. I need to be able to have a system to be able to pass the work over to the staff quicker because they have the capacity within the th months, you know, that I did. Um, so it's just, you know, you're constantly improving your business and yourself um, with these experiences you're having. And, and they're not failures. They're not, you know, I didn't do anything um, major that I lost, you know, a lot of money or I lost the, you know, the client didn't go out of business because of it or whatever. Um, it was just something to consider and just, you know, learn from. So you know, I, I think there's a lot of quotes out there around um, treating failure as a, a learning a learning opportunity. Is there anybody else that would like to share how they feel inside of um, failure? Or, you know, what failure they're, they're feeling? Diane, can we put you on the spot? You always do that to me, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, You're very generous. Yeah. Oh, it's it's not failure so much that I feel it. Sometimes it's a blame game. Um, like I've just been through an experience with a with an audit where I was partly at fault, so I admitted the fault, but then I sort of got blamed for the repercussions of everything else following on from that. Mm. Um, so it was more it was more losing. Let's say it sort of checking what you've already done, even though you know you've done things correctly, so you haven't failed in that regard, but then you're sort of blamed for errors that aren't technically your fault, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so it sort of makes you sort of initially self-doubt yourself, like, did I do something wrong? Um, have I failed this client because I didn't do that correctly? When you know you have. So it's, sort of, it's that sort of self-doubt of... Mm of um of just knowing that you've done something correct but then sort of being accused of something or doubted in something and then redoubting yourself if that makes sense um so yeah and you sort of feel mm -hmm. like I've, I've had experiences where I feel like I'm repeating myself but I'm not getting through to the client either on what's required especially mm -hmm. with um certain compliance and and different things and process obviously um so yeah it's not failure so much but more a bit of a self-doubt even though you're confident in what you're doing it takes it takes quite a bit of self-awareness for uh, people to accept their contribution to a particular situation and to take their share of the responsibility of that um, there's a great book called Fierce Conversations by 
Sally, Sue, Lou, you might be able to look that up for me. Um, here's conversations where she talks about how, and maybe we can do this on another, um, this would be a good mm. thing to put on another uh, power hour. But anyway, the bit that I was referring to was one of the steps in, in creating a powerful conversation, which is powerful being, or fierce, being meaningful, um, is about admitting your own contribution to a situation. And it's a, it can be a bit, your confidence can be knocked a bit when you do that and you admit your contribution to this situation, but the other party doesn't admit their contribution to it as well. And so that's when they can start. I think that's what I'm reading in to what you're saying, that they mm. start blaming you for other uh, unrelated or, you know, things outside the actual thing that happened because they're not prepared to take on the responsibility of how, how did they contribute to this situation uh, mm. as it is. Yeah, I think it's also learning not to take certain things personally too, like because sometimes when you're accused of doing something whether it's incorrect or they feel that it's it's incorrect mm -hmm. is it it's not a I learned a long time ago not to be intimidated I guess so not to to take to take things personally because it's not me personally it's the work that's getting done and mm -hmm. it's the knowledge behind the work so um but it's very hard to sort of because they're, they're sort of having a go at you but it's not you personally it's more about the situation or the scenario i think mm. the distinction there needs like i think this is a good point for everyone uh, that the distinction needs to be made about whether they're having a go because sometimes the whole thing can get out of whack and it's out of proportion to what, <laughs> to what was going on and they start to point fingers at you and you are a person um, even though they might, you know, not say it directly, but um, if you feel that they are actually having a go at you, then there's kind of, they've crossed a line. And Katrina, again, and I were talking earlier about, it's a bit like when with, it, with your children, if, they, if your son does something wrong, you don't say you're a bad child or a bad, you know, you're bad. You say that thing that you did, when you did that, this is what happened from that and now this is what's what I've got to fix up or you know whatever the thing is but we always are warned don't say you're a bad boy <laughs> um, and so the distinction in this case and and this is a very common thing for bookkeepers as well that because we're at the front line that we get blamed for everything and it's hard not to take it personally because they start to bring in personal not not you know not directly personal but like your the work that you do, we've got a lot of integrity with the work that we do, and we are humans, and we make mistakes. So don't have a go at my integrity. I did the best that I could. I missed that because I'm human. Um, let's and and um, the the thing that I always because we made mistakes. My team made mistakes. I made mistakes. What I kept coming back to is what system do I need to put in place to make sure that doesn't happen again. And to reassure the client, because when something did go wrong, I acknowledged that my contribution to that, and I hadn't trained my staff in this particular thing or whatever it was, and then I would put in another system in, in place to make sure that that didn't happen again. In my, in my particular scenario, that's exactly what we've done. After the sort of blame game, we got through that process of there has been an error um, certain things are responsible, but going forward, we need to put these processes in place so we don't get caught in this situation again. Yeah. So we have actually resolved it in that regard, but it was a, it was a tough road of getting past that yeah. sort of blame game, I guess. Yeah. Um, and why wasn't it picked up and why wasn't it done correctly to start with? So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that, the, yeah, the important thing with that is that to know where your boundaries are as well and where you're prepared, you know, that's the line in the sand, don't cross over that line. So being respectful, let's deal with the issue. Um, I'm not a bad person. It's not, you know, I made a mistake, they made a mistake, everyone makes mistakes. Um, so let's just keep it onto a business 
professional level, if it goes into the point where, and you also would have all experienced that, where they've stepped over, and it's, I think it's important that we say, hang on, now, now I'm feeling very uncomfortable with how you're speaking with me now. Um, let's keep this on a professional level because we both want to achieve the same thing. I've acknowledged that I made that mistake and I apologised for that. Now what we're doing is, so don't, you know, like don't let them speak rudely and treat you disrespectfully and all of that. And, and it takes a bit of courage and, and thanks. Um, oh, Helen, you've put that up. Susan Scott, Fierce Conversations. Um, it's a great book, by the way. Uh, would recommend that if you want to. Uh, what it does, it helps you articulate um, the message in a particular way to have the best outcome. So you, you want the best outcome for both parties, even if you disagree, that we're both dealing with this, acknowledging it in a particular kind of way. Anyway, we can have another session. Um, mm, it's a good okay. good topic. And I, I'm not sure if it's one of our books in our book club. If it's not, it probably should be for next year yeah. um, that we bring that up because it's um, really, it's just like a little template to show you exactly how to, how to have that conversation. Yeah. Um, but inside with the, the, the failure, I mean, Diane, you've survived. You mm. like you felt you got that, you felt that failure, you made it right, and you've survived. So don't be scared of failure, I suppose, is the message. You know, it's going to happen because our expectations are high and we're looking for perfection. So it's it just expect it to happen and embrace it and, and like go to move towards it even because it will help you um you know with your personal and professional development and you know give you the opportunity to to grow not only just as a person but also your business because now diane's you know put systems in place to avoid that happening again so now it's not going to be a repeatable thing she's used that experience as as a learning curve and a you know a, you know something that's going to improve your business which is which is awesome thank you <laughs> Is there anybody else that would like to share any stories around failure? I, I can see some familiar faces. You know I'm going to pick on you, don't you? <laughs> I'll say something. <laughs> Linda, go ahead. Yeah, um, uh, one of the things that um, it's probably not giving as much time as I could to the clients. You know how um, Thank when you. you're... Uh, yeah, and I think, you know, you can do more for them. And there are some, like, the, I know there's one in particular where we go out on site um, every so often, um, once a month. Um, but I could really do that twice a month and I could actually go and do a lot more. And it's kind of like you've got so many things on the go that you just got to have to sometimes do the bare bones and the basics to tick everything off, make sure, yep, that's running on time. And then I just sort of feel guilty. Actually, we could actually do more for them, mm. actually really do more for them. And then when you look around and you look at all of them, you think, actually, I could do more for all of them. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, I think it's just time is against you. And then just bits and pieces come up and that take your time. And, yeah, you tend to go, oh, I'll just put that to the side, that's a side. But, yeah, I think um, maybe finding more time, that could be a goal for the next financial year is that my, finding more time for the actual clients that we have and really going through everything and going, what can we do more for them? which will, you know, it'll, in turn will increase the revenue for us, but um, would also give them a much better complete package or, or service or value, you know, for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Melinda, do you have staff? Um, no, it's just uh, Neil and myself. And oh. we're, you know, we're, yeah, we're, we're, I mean, pretty much uh, capacity for one person and, yeah. and then a little yeah. bit more. And then we've also tried to do, put all the systems in place. So for the two yeah. of us, we're pretty full on and we're hoping to maybe by the end of the year, early next year, to be putting someone on. But I'd really love to get all the systems in place first. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. 
I, I find these type of realizations, um, which which is awesome, and thank you for sharing. It gives you the opportunity to explore what can happen in your business, what is possible, and 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 you've just said my you know one of my goals is going to be time management. So mm-hmm. it, it gives you now the exploration of what can change, what can you do to make this better. You know, you realize that there's more money on the table. Yeah. Uh, with your current clients like it's not hard to grow when you realize that so it's putting your systems in place so that you can put staff on to scale and and get other people to do the work knowing mm. that the system is going to lead them into what they need to do for you to be able to review it you know accurately for you to be able to work on your own personal development and on your own business as well mm. So it's, yes. you know, you know, realizing that and putting putting actions in place as a result of it. So it's not just sitting in there, you know, month after month, year after year saying, I'm a failure because I can't do any work. Yeah. It's the action that happens after that failure is the more important than the realization or the, or the actual failure itself. Mm. Yep. And Melinda, the, um, as far as time management, the reality is, that right now, because you are implementing the systems and um, and you are already full, I think the goal um, is going to be more around planning when you're going to put on your next and have a goal to put on yep. your next yep. staff member. For example, you know January or November, whatever the the thing is. And also the other bit of advice I would give you is don't. It doesn't have to be perfect. This, you know, you don't have yeah. to have everything implemented um, yeah. before you recruit. When you are already full up, then it's likely that you'll need help from the new recruit to help you implement things. Yeah. Um, and so the goal then could be with with regards to time management. Yes, you all, everyone needs to be managing that and and getting the most out of the finite amount of time that we've all got in a day, but when you are already full and you're putting systems in place, the, the time will free up when, not immediately when you recruit, it definitely won't free up immediately, but you will be on the track to freeing up more time so that you can then create goals. So I would recommend uh, that you actually think about, well, what is it that you do want to provide for your clients? You might yeah. even do a, might even do an extra scoping of work for, like in these coming months, say, mm-hmm. look, you're changing your business model or you're putting on a, we'll be putting on another bookkeeper early next year so that you can free up more time to provide your clients with some advisory work. What's, what would they, what do they want? Yeah. Um, have you yeah. spent any time talking to them? Or you could even go to them and say, I can actually see where I can add more value to you in these areas. If we did these three things, but before I can do that, I need to put on staff. And that will be the introducing the whole um, idea of you not doing their book, their day-to-day bookkeeping as well. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. It's a work in progress and, you know, start documenting and, and understanding what it is that you're wanting to achieve. Awesome. Anybody else want to share a story? Maybe um, maybe we could move towards what success means to to everybody, um, because in trying to um, achieve success is the fear of failing before we get to that success. Mm. So. Would anybody like to come off mute and, and let us know what success means to you, whether it's around your business or your personal life? And and also I would add to that is the we are often afraid because we're talking about fear and fear of failure, but we're often there's this underlying little current of of being, it's kind of sounds like a contradiction, but to be afraid, like, because we're setting goals and we want to do all these things, but they, they can, it's very common to have an underlying fear of actually succeeding. What will, what when Katrina and I were talking earlier about um, when we were offline, um, you know, when I, I 
as I grew my team, you know, anyone, like when I was first on my own, year end, coming up to year end was a nightmare. And even when I had a team, until I had the right systems in place and I had them all trained, it was still a nightmare. It was a bigger nightmare. Um, but once I had that ticking over, so I'd worked really hard to put the systems in place, train the staff, I then went away in July for six weeks. And so I wasn't there. I actually left. I mean, it wasn't mayhem at that point, but everyone was very busy. Everyone had, you know, all the deadlines and the payroll and all of that. And I had my operations manager there managing it. And I went to Europe with my husband. We did that every year for a number of years until COVID. Um, but when I had my business, you know, there was a couple of times there's been the word guilt um, brought in and things like that to actually what is it going to feel like for you when you are able to, when you've got your team and you are successful in your, in your world and you um, are able to go away at the busiest time of your year, of the, of the financial year, what is that going to feel like for you? Have you actually thought about what, you know, leaving your team behind and have them do the work and you going on a holiday at that? And, and so fearing success is, is just as real as the fear of failure. Anyone got any thoughts or comments about that? They're all quiet. <laughs> Diane, you're on screen still. I know that's uh, an interesting. I know I'm showing my face today. <laughs> um, I think with me, it's more it's that roadblock of letting go of of things. Like for me to do what you've done, Debbie, to actually go away in July, that would scare the absolute crap out of me. Yes. Um, yes. More so because you, it's that. It's, I suppose it's, it's all like, it's all like the busiest month, really, when you think about it. So to have that position that you're in to actually get on a plane and go somewhere else mm. and having the faith in the people that you've left to do the work for you, that, that's amazing. That's, that's, I mean, I'm at the point, obviously, with same as um, what Melinda was saying is engaging someone to, to, to look after things. So I'm not doing it all. Yeah. Um, to get to that point would be um, would be amazing. And, and so, I, I so. also was uh, um, the thought when when I was in at your level uh, on my own and um, or even maybe one staff or something like that. The thought of me being away in July was like Pete and I were going no way. It's like the not then. Like how about October? <laughs> you know, like. Any other time, but not then. And it was like Pete often described that when when we were doing our seminars and that he'd be, he'd be say Debbie would be rocking in the corner with the thumbs in her mouth going, <laughs> I can't be away in July. Don't tell me I can be away in July. <laughs> so it, but it can happen if that's what you want. And I think the other thing we were talking about off air was it's very important that you are on your own journey. You don't have to do what I did. You don't have to do what Katrina did. Katrina was very successful in uh, to the level that she wanted the staff and sold her business and all of that. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So anyone on the call that is quite happy, we've got wonderful licensees that have made, grown a what we call a lifestyle business where they're on their own and they're traveling around Australia and they're in their caravan or they're wherever they, they are and they're very contented. I think it's very important that you run your own race. This is about you, not about you cloning me or me cloning, you know, into you kind of thing. It's that that is that you're setting your talk about failure. If you are running someone else's race, you're setting yourself up to fail. Well, yeah. I can just say I'm with Melinda. What she's just put in the chat there is... Yeah is I can relate to that because I think of clients' issues at really stupid times as well. Mm. Um, I don't particularly lose sleep over it, but I do wake up and think of things that I shouldn't be thinking of, really. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's a 
a great point too. Like, because it's like, I think you made the comment a few webinars ago about, you know, caring about the business, the client's business more than they do. Yeah. Um, and that sort of stuck with me. And I think that's why we, we get so um, emotional about their issues. Um, mm -hmm. And we start to worry about them. And we, and we do wake up in the middle of the night or we do, you know, think of them at stupid times of, you know, I didn't mm. do that or I need to do this or I have to get that invoice out or whatever it might be. Mm. Um, well, you, so, you, you wake up worried about how the client's going to pay their own staff the next mm. day because uh, they don't, you know, they don't have the cash and you, you wake up worried for their staff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Don't care. If for those that missed that, I said, don't care more about your client's business than they do. Mm. It's a very strong comment. Mm. So just for those that aren't on the call or listening back later, Melinda had written success equals a good night's sleep without waking up thinking of business and client stuff. Mm. So that's yeah that that's that's nice and hopefully success will mean like there'll be something more uh, than that um when you get past you know a bit of your time management and you're you know putting systems in place that you can develop a success um you know maybe success will mean a lot more to you which might be not working weekends or um, you know, finishing up at four o'clock or, you know, having some family activities or successes going away on holidays in July, um, maybe the success story becomes different to just not waking up and worrying in the middle of the night. Yeah. Helen, did you want to share your, what, what success means to you? <laughs> what does it mean to me? And it doesn't even have to be just business. It, it can be, you know, your personal life as well, that you are, you just, you know, got a nice balanced life and, you know, that you've, you know, got your kids have grown up and nice, you know, good people and you've been able to spend the time with them. I think it's more, um, I think when I feel successful, it's when you've done something that... <laughs> Um, just puts you on a high. That's, you know, it's never, it's not a monetary thing. Like if you hit a budget, um, that's great, but it's, um, yeah, that's fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But I think when I really feel like I'm running a good successful business or you've done something well, I think it's when you have a win, a win for some whatever reason, you know. I had a couple this week. <laughs> Um, just recovering money for clients that they thought they couldn't receive in grants or whatever it is. And just knowing that you did something for a client that they never expected because they weren't waiting on that money and it was out of the blue and you went fishing and, you know, before I told the client, I thought I'll go and make sure and see if there's a chance to get these funds. Um, and then, you know, when, when it comes back and it's positive, I don't know, I just, that's, well, it just puts me on a high and just makes me feel I'm on the right track. I'm serving the clients well, mm -hmm. um, you know, providing that extra value. I don't know, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We, we actually, awesome. I had a good conversation with um, Sharon yesterday. We had hit our, our annual financial year budget, financial in sales that I wanted to hit. We went way over it, which I was, mm -hmm. I was happy about. But I just said to her, I'm so physically exhausted. <laughs> I can't even enjoy yeah. it. So, and we know team, you know, the team side of things is an issue at the moment that we'll be addressing. But, you know, so it's not for me, success is not always monetary. Um, yeah. No, no, there's got to be that, that balance. You've got to have achieved a monetary success or a business success with your own health in check as well. Oh, yeah. or, you know, doing things that you, that you want to do. Mm. I know, Deb, um, we mentioned off the call that you had done some personal development and you had a story around um, the, the failure side, which was an interesting, interesting story. So did you want to share that? Yeah, yeah. Um, always happy to share my failure stories and <laughs> whatever else, all the mistakes that I've made. But this was actually, I went to, a, participated in a landmark forum, oh, talking 15 years ago or something like that 
and it was I think it was a four week this particular one was a four week program so there was a build up and it, it's all about it's all it's a personal development program it's not a business development program and there were lots of people there with obviously lots of different things going on in their world and one of the things and, and so towards the, the end I think it was actually it was in the last week of the the four-week program um the person said what what is your biggest fear and mine was as clear as a bell I said failure you know I'm said to myself failure and everyone was thinking about what was the biggest fear that they had and different people had different things um and then she went through an exercise she said the thing that you are the most afraid of then I want you to go around so everyone got off their chairs and went around and introduced to as many people like you had about one minute to go around and introduce yourself and you just say this is my name and this is what I'm afraid of but you said it in such a way for example in my case I said hi I'm Debbie Roberts I'm a failure and it's kind of it it felt very confronting, confronting. <laughs> um, and at first and then but you just said it so many times in that minute or two minutes that it kind of became you realized it was it was just a word and it's it's not true anyway whatever I think about it or whether whether I feel that or I fear failure or whatever it's still failure is still just a word and all the emphasis we put on the feeling around that and what will that mean? What will people say about me um, if I fail? So if I set this goal and I don't get there, what will people What will people say? Will that mean I'm out of integrity with what I, because I haven't done what I said I was going to, all this stuff was going on. And um, so it was a very confronting, but also by the end of it, we were all just laughing. Uh, we, we're going up to the last person and saying, this is just kind of, I realised then that I was way too serious about setting goals and, and I said earlier, being attached to them and what happens if I don't get there and all these sort of things. It's, so it's, and I started off earlier by saying one of the solutions then was to lighten up about the whole thing. If you set goals and you don't achieve it, you're not a failure. That just means that you need to reset your thinking or reset your goals or reset what you're doing. And, and you know, if something goes wrong with a, a client and well, what system do I need to be putting in place? We can sometimes, we're very good at beating ourselves up, very efficient at that. And we can go right to the heart of the matter when we uh, when we do fail at something, whether that's um, you know not servicing your clients, you you beat yourself up about it, or get something wrong and you beat yourself up about it. And so it's it's uh, one thing that I kept telling myself is no one's actually died. So if we really want to weigh that up against thing life and death situations. No one's died from this mistake that I've made or this failure or whatever. Let's just be professional about it and think clearly about what the solution is to make sure it doesn't happen again. Mm. Yeah, I, I love that story. Imagine walking around saying I'm a failure. <laughs> like, <laughs> it wouldn't feel very, very good to admit that to, to complete strangers. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then the, yeah, it was like, as I say, it was the end, it kind of sounds a little bit out of context given me just blurting this out. There was a lot of build up to all of this and revelations and insights and different chipping away at um, people's pasts and what happened then and, you know, uh, because people carrying baggage forward. So there was a whole a context around it, but it was a powerful thing. So whatever you're afraid of if you if you do fear failure then just treat it you know say it I fear failure you don't have to say I am a failure you can just say my biggest fear is failure um, or my biggest fear is success or whatever my biggest fear and say that to a few people in your household 
and see how you feel around that. I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to fail. I've, I've, you know, I'm committed to growing my business, but I don't know. I've, I'm, I've, this has gone wrong now and I'm lacking confidence now. Can I actually do that? And get surrounded by those people who love you and fill up with love, as I often refer to it, give them big hugs and fill up with love and get back out there to get back on the horse and you're not a failure um, and don't let those sorts of fears hold you back. Mm. Yeah, that's a, a great story. Um, Helen, you're actually off mute. Did you want to share? Um, oh, you've just unmuted. Oh, Sorry, you, you just... You muted <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just doing a little chat message to say sorry, everyone. I've got to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> at one, so I've got to head off. Um, Perfectly. Okay. Thank you for sharing your stories. Week. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Jacqueline, I'm going to put you on the spot. You are always a contributor. Do you want to take yourself off mute and maybe even show your video? If you can. May not be live listening. Oh, okay. That's um, yep. She has. What about you, Lindell? Are you are you with us virtually? Yes. <laughs> Hi, good to see you. Well, not kind of can't quite see you yet, but that's all good. How do you feel about? You got any insights about any of the comments or conversations today? Uh, I guess for me is I, I'm kind of at that cusp at the moment of where. I'm um, looking at, I, I've been working for the last four and a half years, heading up a um, the bookkeeping team in an accounting firm, as well as running my own business. Um, and I've built their business quite substantially now, but it's at the point now where I've built both of them at the same time kind of thing. And mm -hmm. um, I'm now running out of time and, you know, and time as in, I just don't have any more time to give and I need to, I give to, I, I need to make a decision of which way I'm going to go, like whether I'm just going to go full-time employ, employed, which I'll only ever be capped um, or jump full-time back into my business again now. Um, so that's very, those very real concerns that you just mentioned is um, one of my biggest fears is that I may fail um if I go because it, it does comes back on to me if I do it myself whereas if I'm working for somebody else you kind of can hide behind that oh well I'm just an employee sort of thing but yeah but that's where so, I know I can do it yeah and I guess what what might help you uh, and it, it's not something that we haven't said before but it's the reason so why what, what is your vision? Where do you want to be in five or whatever years' time um, that you, ca you can't get as an employee um, and will only be able to attain that, whether it's a financial thing, whether it's a lifestyle thing, whether it's uh, just, just giving it a go. I know we've got, I've spoken to bookkeepers that said, I just want to, I want to prove that I can actually do this. What's your, what's your reason? I guess, you know, I'm, I'm 52 and I've got two young kids and just time. I just want to have that flexibility and um, because I'm, they're not going to be, you know, young for very long. Mm. You know, they're already 14 and 16. So, mm. you know, so I don't have a lot of time. I do have, you know, they'll be around for the rest of my life and their life, but um as far as having them in my life, they may not be as in my life as what they are now. So I just want to be able to give them time, yeah. you know. And, and I suppose and, the thing is, is that all they ever see is me working. Yeah. So when I'm, not at, when I'm not at the accounting firm, you know, and I, I kind of kick myself because I don't know why I have so much confidence. So when I joined them, they were uh, their bookkeeping division was at um I think it was uh eight thousand dollars a month it's now up to twenty eight thousand dollars a month four mm -hmm. and a half years later 
Yeah. Um, and that's, and I'm thinking, well, how come I can apply, I, I'm kind of, I, I suppose I'm rough on myself because how, how come I can apply that confidence and principle to there? Mm-hmm. But I kind of need to have that same confidence and principle. If I can do it there, I can do it here. I, I'm running, mm-hmm. the, I'm, tr- I'm putting in this processes. I, um, I'm putting in their quoting processes. I'm uh, implementing their staff, uh, doing their, you know, and all for what, 35 bucks an hour. Yeah. You know, you've what, got this in the, Yeah. So what what would happen if you did take that leap of faith? And I left- now I think well I would lose that that consistent income. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that would be oh. that. Yeah. But what what is the opportunity for you? What is, you know, if you took that leap of faith, what what could you create? What I could create that same kind of revenue for me. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. so much just for me, but for my my staff. Like, I mean, I know that the people, like the staff member I have working for me here in my business, she's been with me for nearly six and a half years. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know that my staff like working for me and the team that I have in there, you know, like they feel supported by me and, um they enjoy working for me and working with me and you know under me so Mm -hmm. I know that my staff when I when I've got the time to focus and do things and implement things they do feel very supported but I think that's the other thing I just I need to I just that's I'm just at that cusp at the moment so Mm -hmm. and I'm really and I'm really I'm really quite a loyal person so if I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go in there, what am I going to say to these people that have employed me for the last four and a half years? Mm. But I think I've done okay by them at the same time, you know? Yeah, well, they've done okay yeah. by you. Yes. Yeah. They've po- pocketed as a result of all of your hard work and, you know, yeah. that you could also bring to your own business. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you- and I think that vision is very important because I don't think I've got that for me. Yeah, that, that's what I would definitely be spending more time, really mm. deep thinking and writing, mm. uh, whatever is your way of processing um, the the thoughts in your in your head uh, around. Yeah, what is it going to the pros and cons? You can even get really practical yep. about it. Yeah, pros and cons. Um, yeah, how long would you uh, estimate? So work out the income, well, you know the income that you get from them and how long would it take you, how many clients would it take to replace that income and, um, and can, you, can you do without that for, a period, for that period of time if that's, if that's, what, if that's what's going to happen? Um, can you build up your own business outside of that while still doing that until you can cover that income? So there's lots of really practical a practical exercise that you can go through that will give you the financial confidence that you've got this because I've I've got every confidence that with mm. your level of experience, the world is your yeah. Mm. I probably need eight clients to replace yeah. that yeah. income. Just yeah. going off a quick calculation of what a basic service level is that I do. Now the other the other way you mentioned well we've got to we're going to be wrapping up in yeah. a minute but just another thought is that you mentioned about conversation. Um, if you wanted to, you could say to them, "Look, I'm. Uh, it's been wonderful. I'm now want to focus on my own business." You could train someone. There might be someone on their team that could take over what you're doing, possibly. Um, mm. And you could then be around a couple of days a week initially. So that would give you a couple of days a week income, that regular income. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that you could then just be guiding that person and training them over those couple of days, but not responsible for everything. For workflow. Yeah. Yeah, for workflow. And that will give you time, a bit more of that income if that was important um, to, to give you that bit of a, a safety net. And it's a good way of actually easing yourself out of it as well by saying, look, I'm not going to 
just leave. Uh, I'm quite prepared to work a couple of days a week if uh, to train a new person if that if you want it or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think, and I think that's what I, I want to be fair and reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's where I'm kind of at at this moment in my yeah. career. Yeah, good to hear from you. And, and so I'll be, able to hook, I'll be able to hook in to you guys a bit more than what That'd I have be been. Great. That'd be yeah. great. That'd be great for that. Yeah. I'd love to hear your story of your leap of faith. Yes. <laughs> Leaving yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you, Terry. All right, so we will wrap it up now at the top of the hour. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today and listening in. Appreciate your time. And, and thanks, Deb. Lots of great insights as usual. So thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye.